we thought it'd be a good day to check in with our friend Dan Bongino. Of course, you know Dan is a former New York City cop. He is a former Secret Service agent and a guy who knows a lot about what it is to be on the front lines there. And uh, given the fact that there is this chokehold case in New York City in which a grand jury uh, has decided not to take action, we thought it might be good to ask Dan his uh, take on it. And Dan, uh, by now, you've seen the video, no doubt. And, and the question that we have and the question that keeps coming back to us from uh, law enforcement uh, officers who listen to this program is th- th- some people call it a chokehold and some people call it a takedown hold. In your estimation, which was it? Well, this is important because it's not a distinction without a difference. There are basically three things you have to keep in mind here. There's what's called a, a windpipe choke, which is absolutely banned. That's a form of deadly force. That would be, in effect, placing the blade of your, your lower arm, the bone, up against someone's windpipe, and you could crush it. That's, that's deadly force. Second, there's what they call a carotid artery choke, which temporarily stops the blood flow, which rarely, if ever, is fatal. It usually just results in sometimes temporary unconsciousness. Third would be a headlock, like, which is basically just grabbing the head and taking someone down. That's what initially it looks like. That's how it started. You grab them from behind and take them down. But I don't think there's any question at the end, Brian, if you look at at the end of the video, that it eventually turns into a chokehold, albeit temporarily. He lets it go pretty quickly once he gets him on the ground. All right. So you think it's a combination. Initially a takedown hold. Right. And then right. It, and it's, that's important because he, it doesn't look like in, in the initial part he's attempting to choke him. It looks like he's attempting to take him down. But I don't know if he panicked. Again, I wasn't there. I don't know what was going through his head. But it looks like he may have panicked, given the guy's size, and then just instinctively went for this, this choke load. And, and that's where I think the trouble starts. Well, and, and given that, uh, Dan Bongino, when you see that video, and obviously you have, and you've, you, you, you have uh, some doubt as to what ended up happening here, um, given that second-degree manslaughter in New York is defined by uh, causing another person's death by reckless behavior, were you surprised that the grand jury didn't at least send this to a full trial? Yeah, a lot of my NYPD cop friends were actually stunned too. I think they thought it was a was a given, given the video and the and, and administrative limits on any form of a chokehold by the NYPD. It's a it's a banned technique. I always say, Larry, the, the general rule with the NYPD is just stay away from the neck. Uh, it's not going to end well. And they had charged such a bevy of charges from reckless endangerment at the low end up until I uh, I think manslaughter. That, yeah, I was kind of surprised they, they didn't have an indictment. Remember, it, it's not beyond the reasonable doubt, the grand jury. Right. It's only probable cause. Yeah, I agree. And I was surprised. Yeah, let, let me ask you this then, as a former uh, New York police officer. Um, you know, you got a situation like this. The guy, I mean, he was a very large man, close to 400 pounds, six foot five, I think he was. Um, the cops obviously had him outnumbered, but he's still a big guy. What What is a cop to do in, in this situation? Yeah, what do you do in a situation well, like that? That you guys just asked the you know sixty four million dollar question and every single media head I've been asking if you're, you're going to look at it fairly from both sides I just gave you the you know the family side yeah see at some point it looks like there was some form of a choker that was banned but from the police officer's side when the, when when Garner says not today I'm not doing this today and puts his hands up and it doesn't look like he puts his hands up to surrender he puts his hands up because he doesn't want to be handcuffed. Uh, what do you want them to do? I mean, remember, they were answering what was called a radio run, meaning they were sent there. They didn't initiate this. Someone called the police central, what they called 911, and they sent the police officers to the scene, whether to get rid of them or whatever it was. I don't know what he was doing. But you can't just call back central with a disposition and say, hey, guys, he doesn't want to come in. <laughs> so you have to see it from the cop's perspective yeah. as well if you want to give a fair analysis of what happened. All right, so, you know, I, I, the thing that I came to is is we don't know uh, what led up. We've seen the video, but but we don't know what happened before the video. And we don't know the history of this particular individual. I mean, did these police officers know this guy? Was he known to the local police on the beat? Had they had trouble with him before? Did they have reason to believe it was going to be a real struggle? I mean, these are all things that we don't know because they didn't, as they did in Ferguson, release all the information that was presented to the grand jury. Yeah, that, that's a, a, a great point. He says at one point, Garner, to one of the police officers, you know, I'm tired of being harassed, not today, indicating that there is some form of a history there. And then keep in mind, you know, guys, the grand jury proceedings are always going to be secret. So we don't know what happened in there. 
Uh, I don't know if that was part of it. I, I can't say, but you're, you're, you're absolutely right. Clearly there's some history there between uh, Garner and one of the cops on the scene. So uh, did it contribute to it? I don't know. I wasn't in the grand jury, but I, I think it may have. Uh, our guest is Dan Bongino. Dan, this is our first time to talk to you since uh, that unhappy morning when uh, when it was uh, determined that you would not be representing the 6th District in Maryland in this upcoming Congress. But I would like to ask your take on uh, an issue that's before Congress right now, and that is the potential defunding of, at the very least, the Homeland Security Department because of the, the Congress's desire to respond to the president's executive amnesty uh, as a former former Secret Service agent, if funding were cut off to Homeland Security or limited to Homeland Security uh, with regard to immigration, it would affect Secret Service and many other vitally necessary Homeland Security departments. What would you want to do if you were in Congress right now? Well, just to be clear, even if funding was temporarily stopped, Secret Service agents have to go to work. They're essential employees, so it's not going to affect any essential function it, it, the Secret Service agents will be there no matter what. But as, uh, you know, one time, Larry, I think you were out on a, a vacation somewhere, and I was sitting there with Brian, and Brian and I had this battle on the air about, well, when do you fight? I mean, if they're going to just continue to kick the can down the road with every single fight, say, well, we can't do this, we can't do that, we can't do this, we can't do that, well, what's the point? I mean, people voted in Republican to say no, enough of this, and where do you stop it? Even the Washington Post, Larry, today has an opinion piece saying what the president, the Washington Post, yeah. not the Times. Oh, I know. That's I know. Un unprecedented. Where do you fight? And if you're not going to fight that again, what's the point? Hey, Dan, real fast, before I lose you, uh, we were speaking uh, about the Larry Hogan's transition team and putting together his cabinet. Uh, you've had a month since your run. Would you be interested in uh, working on the, the governor's uh, new administration? Well, I've never given you canned answers, but can I give you one now? No. I would be, I would be honored to be uh, called, but I haven't spoken to them about it. But there's my first canned right. answer on WMA. I like that. By the way, happy anniversary. It was just a year ago when we shaved your head, so I love that. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yeah. I love it. Thank a year ago that. last week. All right. Dan, I, thank, I kept the hairstyle. <laughs> th thank you so much. Good to have you, my friend. Thanks, guys.